Links Outdoors here with another tent review. For t uh, today, I've got the Tarp Tent Notch LI, which stands for lithium, which is what they refer to as their DCF lines of their tents. They make a lot of their tents in both silk nylon and DCF, so this is the DCF version. The Notch is an ultralight one person double wall trekking pole tent, which is a lot less common. Most of them are single wall, meaning it's just the one layer of this DCF material attached to some mesh. This particular tent has an entire inner mesh body that's removable, and you can have just the DCF rain fly set up almost like a tarp, or you can set up just the inner mesh body by itself too, and that turns it into like a stargazing bug shelter. This one has a couple small non permanent modifications that I've done. So I'm excited to show you what I have done to this tent to make it a little bit more what I want the tent to be. So what I plan to do is go over setup, show you the features of the tent, show you the modifications I made, and then pack it up. And lastly, I'll go over the weights and compare some of my modifications to the default stuff that it came with. First things first, let's set this up. So one thing that's unique about the, the notch in general is that it uses carbon struts on the, the ends for the head and the foot. So that gives this tent a little bit more structure. All right, let me show you what, what I mean by the, the struts. So this particular tent has two carbon fiber struts that are on the head and the foot ends of the tent. They are removable. There's this strap here that you can loosen up enough that you can take these carbon sections out. So if you want to pack this into your ultralight pack that doesn't have enough width for this pole, you can remove these. It is a little bit of a pain to have to put them back into these sleeves each time. But that's one of the modifications that I've made to this, which I'll, I'll show more in depth in a little bit. But they're about 16 inches long for the struts by default. It has a bit of a unique feature where there's a single stakeout point on the head and the foot, and there's line locks to adjust that. Uh, it is a symmetrical tent, so you don't have to set up a head and foot specific end. You can set it up. All right, this is a very simple tent to set up. Let me show you. Let's do a quick walk around. Here you can see the two carbon struts that go to those two different line locks that go to the one stakeout point. There are peak vents at the top on both sides, waterproof zipper, and the other end is symmetrical. One feature that you do have on the notch tents is the little triangles of material here on the end can get rolled up out of the way if you want even better ventilation. So let me roll that up really quick and I'll show you what that looks like. There is a little piece of Velcro. All you do is remove that and you can tuck that panel somewhere out of the way. And that gives you the ability to get a nice cross breeze through. You can also see this nylon strap on the bottom that prevents those carbon struts from overextending. Now let me show you how the, the vestibule doors here work. So you have two options. You can guide out really quick with the short guy out point down in the bottom, or you can also use the attached guy lines that go up to the apex. One reason you might want to do this is because you have a much more comfortable ventilated setup if you roll back the vestibule doors, which I want to demonstrate. So by switching over to this guy line, that gives me the ability So here's a look at the interior. 
one of the wonderful things about this tent is that you can roll up both sides of the vestibule, like this side is done, on both sides of the tent. So you can get a really good cross breeze through there, which is a really nice feature. This tent only needs four stakes to set up, one at each end, the head and the foot, and then one on each side, whether you choose to do the apex guy line like this, or if you do the bottom vestibule one, like on the far side. A nice feature is like a lot of the modern DCF tents coming out, it does have magnets to hold open the vestibule doors, which are very convenient, make it a lot faster and easier to close those up, especially if you wake up to rain. It does not come with the little zipper pulls. I put a go in the dark one just to find it more easily, but they are double zippers, which gives you the ability even in bad weather to zip the top zipper down and make this vent bigger for a little bit better ventilation. There are pockets on each side of the door. Admittedly, they're not my favorite. Uh, the triangle on them makes it so things can fall out pretty easily. One of the things that makes the notch um, different than most of their trekking pole tents is the fact that the inner body, this whole mesh body and this DCF floor is completely removable. So there's clips that go up to the top. That little metal titanium ring is one of my very simple mods. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get that mitten clip on and off that before it just goes to the little piece of stretchy webbing that the metal clip is connected to. So it's a lot harder to get that stretchy loop onto the mitten clip. So that's one thing that I added that adds almost no weight, makes it way easier. It's the same on both ends. So you can see, hopefully, that there are three attachment points for the inner body to the outer body here. And I've added mitten, those titanium keychain rings for the mitten clips. It makes it so much faster and simpler to press those mitten clips on. Here I've opened up the other side so you can see that you have a wonderfully meshy open tent when you roll up both sides like that. You do have to stake out both of the apex guy lines to make that happen, but that's far from difficult to swap over. And you could even just stake those out when you set it up in the first place rather than the guy line that goes at the bottom of the vestibule door. So one thing about the interior of this tent, it is very wide in the center, but it tapers down by both the head and the foot. Um, to help expand the center and, and keep it held apart, there's these little nylon straps that are designed to get pinched by your trekking pole. Uh, in the peak here, there are metal grommets for the spiky end of your trekking pole to go into. So that is designed for that. The doors are symmetrical on each side. The little nylon strap here does make it a lot easier to open and close those doors. And there aren't magnets. Instead, you just end up with this elastic shoelace-like material. And you can just tie like a half hitch, like you start by tying your shoes and that kind of holds that open. So let's, uh, I'll, I'll climb in now to give you an idea about the size. So if I sit up tall, I'm 5'11", without a mat in here, my head does gently touch the center here um, if I sit up very straight. However, it's, it's not horrible. If I was on a thick three inch mat, I would have to kind of hunch over a little bit. There's a lot of room at the width. And when you lie down, you do have a lot of room on, on the sides by your waist, either to keep equipment or even just to rest your hands. So that is kind of nice. So here's a look at what it's like to be inside the tent. So the tent is actually very long. Um, I'm sitting pretty much in the dead center right now and I still have at least a foot to go before my feet would be touching into the end there. I'll lie back for you. So you do have a, a decently high apex in the middle. However, this does come down. This mesh comes down very steeply, very quickly. So it's not resting on your face by any means when you're lying down, but I'd say how I'm lying down right now, I would say that the mesh is probably about maybe eight inches in front of my face. So if you're very claustrophobic, I could see somebody having an issue with that. 
So here's a better idea of what I mean. One thing that I don't like is when I sit up, my head does brush against it. I'm going to take the inner body out of the tent now so you can see what it looks like just with the tarp set up. One of the reasons that I really am attracted to that design is if you get to camp and it's just pouring out and you still have to kind of cook dinner or you're not ready to crawl into your sleeping bag yet, you can set up this tent without the inner body and have just the outside DCF rain fly almost as a tarp with a trekking pole tent so you don't have to find trees or anything. So that's a really attractive feature. So let me switch it over for that. So it can be as fast and, and as quick as that. I left the three ends attached down here on this side because I find that I can roll it up and get it tucked well out of the way that I can still use this inside space here as a tarp. You, if you wanted to, or if you had to pack up the soaking wet outside, you could pack up the inner body separate. You can completely remove it and store it separate to try to prevent it from getting wet. So by switching back to the vestibule guy out points like this, it gives you a much more weather resistant tarp. So this might be a great option if you were simply going out um, when there's no bugs. So right now, this is a really protected shelter. This would be perfect if I had to cook dinner right here or something like that, or, or uh, just get out of the rain. So taking the inner mesh body out is very easy to do. Putting it back is a little bit harder, and that's what inspired me to put those little metal rings on there. So I'm going to take the time in real, to go through it really quick and show you what that process is like. Really pretty fast and easy to add that back. All right, let's talk about some of the features that I particularly like on this tent. Like a lot of tents that I've been really into lately, it only requires a basic four stake setup, which is really fast and easy to do. One of the biggest things about this tent and the reason that I bought it was because it is a true double wall tent. You can use just the outer DCF rain fly as a tarp, or you can use just the inner body what that really, really helps with is the condensation issues that DCF tents and single wall tents are prone to having. Because you have complete mesh around you everywhere, your body and your, your sleeping bag and your stuff inside just isn't resting up against the potentially wet condensation rain fly. So it helps you keep drier. The option for removing the little triangle panels down there is kind of nice. I do like the peak vents and the, the fact that you do have waterproof two-way zippers. So I really don't believe in such a thing as a perfect tent for all situations. So there are some things about the notch that aren't my favorite. First and foremost, I'm not a huge fan of the shape of the interior body. There's a lot of width by the waist, which I like, and you can squish a wide width sleeping mat in there. It does press out the uh, kind of like when the shoulder areas are. But it can work. You definitely wouldn't want to fit a wide width rectangular mat in there. That wouldn't go as well. But I, I wish that the interior was a little bit bigger. I also wish that the mesh by your head and, and the foot was higher somehow as well. I don't like how I have to hit my head into that slope every time I get in and out. I'm not a big fan of that elastic type of tie off for the inner body. On newer models, such as like the Dipole 2, they have magnetic interior door holds, which I greatly prefer. One thing I don't understand, and out of all the magnetic closures that I have on any of my tents, this is probably my least favorite. This strap here is enormous. It's super long. I have no idea why it has to be that long. So you can see there's a ton of extra slack here. I really wish that it was a few inches shorter so it could really kind of hold that in. Um, I find that it's so loose 
that it comes undone more than any other magnetic door holds that I have. I like the simplicity and the concept of this one stake at the end to be able to use these two line locks to kind of adjust things. However, I find no matter how I play around with it, I just can't get it to be the kind of pitch that I want. These are almost always collapsing in on themselves or I, I don't ever get the proper tension on this. So I have seen some people that get rid of that system and they put stakes to different um, cord locks there and use multiple stakes in the ends. That might work better, but I'm not a huge fan of that. This side of the tent really shows that because of the design of this tent, if you're getting hit by wind on the door sides, they're really big panels and there really isn't much for guy out protection there. So you would certainly want to have the apex skyline staked out for more stability. But if you're getting hit on this really big broad door panel right there, the tent can get a lot of shaking and vibration from the wind. It's, if you have the ability to set it up, it's much more wind dynamic if you can put the head or the foot into the wind. But sometimes you just don't have that option. So just like most tents that are very easy to set up, this one's also very easy to take down. You have the option of either taking the trekking pole out through the top vent or by removing it by underneath the door by unzipping the door part way. You're definitely less likely to damage the tent if you go through the bottom of the door. But just to show you what you can do, you can take this zipper. And if you're very careful, I've kind of put my fist over the tip. You can lift it up out of the vent. Okay, so I want to show off one of my modifications. The biggest issue that I have with this tent is that no matter how you store it, when the way that it comes with these long single pieces of carbon fiber, the tent can't ever get wider or narrow, I should say, than this. And most backpacks, internal volume, even really large packs, don't have the width to incorporate something this wide. Um, I'll, I'll measure this out and show you in the weight section how wide that actually is. So what I've done to get around that, they, they by default does come with this with the ability to loosen the strap up. And that gives you the ability to take these carbon struts out if you wanted to put this inside your pack. Most people that have this model tent really say that they don't end up doing that. They usually just put this tent strapped to the outside of their pack, which I, I tend to try to avoid. But what I've done is I went to a, a website called Quest Outfitters that sells a lot of uh, parts for tents. And I bought the same diameter carbon fiber tent poles, but what I did is I bought them with a ferrule glued in and I put shot cord through. And then at the ends, I've put these little uh, plastic tips and I'll show it again inside in case it doesn't pick it up here. But I actually drilled a small hole through each and besides this one that I'm showing you for the demo, I've put a little, a single stitch. So it's a non-permanent modification. I could easily take that stitch out, but I put in a single stitch that goes through the nylon of this pocket, through this hole, and I just tie it off with a square knot. And what that does is when I collapse these, this one will be a much better example. So first I have to loosen this all the way up. But when I do that, it keeps it so both ends of the pole stay attached. So I don't have to worry about losing them or dealing with that every time. So to me, that was a really big modification because that makes it so this can fit down so much smaller. So one thing to give you an idea is the stuff sack it comes with is pretty long, but with the collapsible poles, I can get it down much narrower. So I can actually fit this and even the ultralight packs that I have, there's enough width in those packs to accommodate that. All right, let's go over weight. So this is the, obviously the stuff sack, the inner and the outer body and the struts, but not the stakes. 
So on my scale, it comes out to 620 grams, which is one pound, 5.9 ounces. So under a pound and a half for a double wall tent. That's, that's pretty amazing. I personally don't know of any lighter than that. Uh, it includes this small steak stuff sack that comes with four of the Easton six inch nail style steaks. And on my scale, that little bundle comes out to 1.2 ounces. All right, I wanna show you the modified poles that I made for this. So the default poles that it comes with are these carbon struts here. So there's two per side, there's four of them total. So these are pretty wide, they're 16 and a half inches wide. So if you think about that, when it's non-collapsible, no matter how you store this tent, unless you remove these poles, you're never getting that stuff sack or tent stored less than 16 and a half inches. Um, I, it's not something I thought about before I bought this tent, but for me, that's a big issue because I like to pack everything I can inside my, my backpack. I, I really don't like to strap things to the outside of my backpack when I can avoid it. So what I did is I went and I found the same diameter carbon fiber poles, but I bought ones that had a glued in ferrule. That's that, like a little aluminum piece that you use to connect multiple sections together. So I cut the pole in half and then I flipped one end that had that metal ferrule and I turned it this way. So I bought some appropriately sized shock cord for, that's rated for this diameter pole. And I also bought these little plastic end caps. And hopefully you can see, I did take the time to put a little drill hole in each of the four, of, uh, in each end of the poles. And so what I do with that, I took this one out just to show you. I've tried to come up with a way that I can leave them attached to the tent for convenience for pitching it. Hopefully I can show this in a way that's not too messy. So here's what it looks like after I have it modified. So down on this end, I put one single stitch through this little nylon cup through the hole of this trekking pole, or, uh, not trekking pole, through this tent pole, and then out through the other side and just tied it off with a super simple square knot. And so that holds it in pretty well. And then I do the same exact thing for the top part here where there's this little cup. And so that, that makes them so they stay in place well enough. Um, and you could still easily remove them if you ever wanted to sell it and maybe go back to the default holes for whatever but then the way that it works, and here's the other modification I did too. You can see it a little bit better. So by default, it, the tent does not come with these little rings. So trying to get this mitten clip, in, when you're inside, it's not so bad, right? Like I'm sitting here at a chair, but trying to get the mitten clip to go back on the stretchy material isn't the easiest thing in the world when you're trying to like squat down in the tent and do it uh, when it's set up outside. But what I like about this ring is I can take this clip and it's normally much easier to just press that little ring right onto the mitten clip. So, and that weighs almost nothing. So I did that for each of the three ends points on both sides, so there's six plus the two at the top of the apex. So there's a total of eight little rings that I added. But anyway, the way that the pole works is you can break it down like this. And the way that I made these poles, they collapse down to about nine and a half inches wide, which is significantly narrower than that. And so if you roll up the tent, you can make it so it's not as long, but a little bit wider, but I, I prefer that because I can fit that in my backpack. And then when it comes time to set this up, because of the shock cord, you can put the pole back in together like so. And then you can take the little tensioning strap that's down here. And you can pull that tight. So the pole really stays in place and can't uh, loosen up. So that's the modification that I came up with for that. And it works really well, to be honest. I, I greatly prefer it. And to break that down, it's really fast and easy. You just create some slack. The two ends come right apart. And because the ends are semi-permanently attached, you can kind of just forget about them. Um, put all the ends together with the poles and just roll it up that way. So overall, it works really well. So what are some final thoughts about the tarp tent notch LI, the DCF version? So as far as I personally know of, it's the lightest weight double wall trekking pole tent that's out there, at least that I've seen. And 
to me, that's really attractive. I have done a lot of backpacking in some really rainy environment. I had record rainfall when I hiked the Superior Hiking Trail. I had rain on more days than I didn't, and everything was just flooded. I, there were so many times that I was just soaking wet. And if I was stuck with a single wall tent, it would have been brutal. Uh, just there would have been so much condensation all the time, I wouldn't have been able to get out of the rain to cook or to pack up. And that particular trip, I did have a tarp and a net tent bivy. And I used that tarp by itself all the time, at least every other day. So that really made me attracted to the ability to have a tarp to cook under, set up under, or pack up under. It just made it so much more convenient if you're in a wet environment. So where I think the notch really wins is its ability for the double wall tent to keep you from getting up against the condensation and also being able to remove the inner body and use the outer rain fly just as sort of a freestanding tarp. So that to me is what was unique enough about this tent that I purchased it. And I really like that about it, especially for its weight. Most tents that are out there, uh, not so much trekking pole tents, but most, most tents out there in general are double wall tents because most people find it much more comfortable to not have to deal with the condensation on the inside of the rain fly and having that, that mesh barrier in between. So that's really where the notch fits into like my tent arsenal is, is because of that. That being said, with so many other tent models coming out that have so much more space on the inside, I personally find the notch to be a little bit tight and small, especially when I'm lying down. I don't like that my head brushes into the mesh every time that I lie down. And when I'm lying there and I feel like I've got this, this mesh right here, once I fall asleep, it's okay. But there's been some times where I've rolled over in it and my face has basically just gone straight into the mesh and it's kind of woken me up. So the interior space for me, my personal preferences isn't quite as big as I'd like it to be. So that's one of my uh, less favorite things about this notch tent. But overall, if you're looking for a tent that's very simple to set up, which is the minimum of four stakes, that's double wall, because you really don't want to deal with the condensation, something like the notch is a really good choice for you because you get that sort of versatility of having a double wall tent that you can use just the inner or the outer. So. If you have any particular questions about this tent or if there's anything that I left out that you'd like to know, feel free to let me know in the comments. I have a whole bunch of other tent reviews on my channel, so if this is the kind of stuff that interests you, feel free to check those out. Thanks for watching.